this entire video will be sponsored and captured on YouTube um, on my YouTube channel. So for those of you who are joining in on YouTube, what's up? And I'm, I'm going to get it together, guys. I am definitely going to get it together in such a way that it's going to be as clear as it, as, as it is on my phone, if not better. And also, it is going to be the bomb.com. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, my name is Nehanda Helmker. I am a English teacher. I teach English as a second language, and I also am an artist and a life coach. I teach people about how to maximize their lives and in areas of finances, relationships, and parenting. Whether it is you're healing from a relationship with your parent, or you are a parent looking to heal or fix or improve the relationship that you have with your children, this is my level of interest and encouragement. So, now that we have all our introductions today, we're supposed to be having a special guest, my friend Miriam Antoinette. Uh, she's going to give you her full name and she's going to tell us about herself. We have worked together on a art project, a, a few art projects, drama and visual arts before. And she's going to be joining me on the Instagram portion for those of you who are on my YouTube channel but have never checked out the Instagram because you might think, well, what's the reason? What's the point? You get the full enchilada on Instagram. On Instagram, you get to see what people's comments and points of view are for the five or ten people that usually show up. I know I am still working on a very good time and timing for my viewers on the other side of the ocean. Um, so, yeah. Um, this is working very slowly on Instagram, so um, I'm just going to... Oh, here she is. Here she is. Uh, um, call back. All right, that's how we're gonna do that. Ring, ring, ring. So, um, yeah. In terms of camera, I, hi, wow, I'm so jealous. It's like sun and all of this good stuff over there. <laughs> Trees and green and all of this. That's it. Looks great. So, um. Let me just, sorry, say something. Let me see if you are, if I can hear you and if you can hear me. Hi, good morning. Hi, yes, I can hear you fine. Excellent. Yes. All right. Okay. So All systems are go. All systems are go. Yay. <laughs> All right, girl. Um, what's up, Chica? You look so green and so warm and sunny and just everything I want to be right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, I love you so much. Um, yeah, so I was gardening and I lost track of time, so um, mm -hmm. I didn't uh, get a chance to like freshen up and be by where I thought I would be. I lost track of time. That's fine. So, um, but it, this is this is me being honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm Pinky, yeah. <laughs> well, we right we here. cannot smell you on this Instagram, so don't worry about none of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I thought it was quite fitting, actually. Right, right. Um, so I just want to get myself. Um, okay. So we're just gonna wing it because last week when I made not it wasn't. I don't know why I keep saying last week. I have also a Friday program, and we had started to have that conversation about honesty guys because we were talking about gaslighting so i'm just going to go ahead and have miriam introduce herself because i like to do things a little differently i know normally it's like send your bio and then i introduce you but can you do that for me and then i'll just chime in and chip in where i feel the need to okay so hi um my name is uh, miriam antoinette and um I, um, I've been in the field of agriculture for, uh, well, since I was a, since I was a young adult, um, age 16, I guess. Okay. Um, and 10 years ago, I, uh, 
I started um, making art. So, and actually, Nihanda, um, uh, yeah, I, I worked with Nihanda in 2012, two years after I uh, did my first exhibit. I did my second exhibit, which was a, 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 a joint exhibit with Nihanda. Um, and it was uh, titled, um, uh, forget what it was. It was, but it, I know, I know your thing was art mm -hmm. in education, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and of course I had the pleasure of playing your mom in, in, in a movie <laughs> in 2020, um, where Nihanda was the protagonist, um, in, uh, 2012 Curse of the Ishtabai. And, um... Yeah, so this is uh, I I I, uh, I started um, in the in the in, in art, you know, um, recognizing that 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 was uh, what I wanted to do ten years ago or about eleven years ago. Wow, I describe so... myself as just a multi-faceted human being, just enjoying life. So there's just so many angles, mm -hmm. you know, to ourselves. Yeah, exactly. So Me... there's no one way to introduce yourself. <laughs> Miriam is also a very, very um, talented advocate and an author. She's written a book, right? I think it was a book of poetry or a book of stories. Yes, I collaborated. I, I am in an anthology uh, called um, This is How We Keep Breathing with uh, some other uh, writers. Um, I believe that was 2018 that that was published. That was um, an anthology that was produced. Um, okay from an online creative writing course with the Ontario College of Arts and Design. Oh, so nice. um, I, I, do write. Okay. I, I do write all the time, but I haven't published any my, my uh, any one work as yet. Um, I'm planning on, on uh, getting to that, that serious work uh, very soon. Um, I'll have to do a leave of absence is what I'm thinking so that I can really tackle that project and bring it to life okay yeah um that sounds good it's also um it's also a very big task like people don't understand how hard writing is to like put your thoughts together together edit it look at it and not always have it's not like art where you just put it together and then you decide okay it's done there's always some more writing that you feel like you need to do or you should have said it this way or that way I've tried it and it is, I, I commend anyone who goes down that rabbit hole. <laughs> um, yeah. When we did that creative writing course, you know, I, I'm the kind okay. of writer who can write like a lot in, in a little bit of time and I don't go back to it. I don't want to read it ever again, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, oh, running the book, she said, oh no, you know, it's about, Normally, it's about I think it was what six, seven edits, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, that it's it's a phase. It's it, there are phases you have to go through with it. So I'm I'm beginning to do that, you know, going back to the pieces, and 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 um and yeah, you do find stuff that you want to do with it all the time. But I've mostly been the kind of artist who does it, even if it takes uh, five years to to finish. Um, but I hardly ever go back and wipe it clean and start over again, you know? Right, right. Um, That's good. Yeah, it's one of those about, uh, yeah, I guess it has to do with a time. Um, yeah, that one. Thing. It has to do with the what? You were cutting out there, so I didn't get that last part. It has to do with what? I'm listening. Generally, generally I, I tend as, just as an example, with, with attachment, you know, I'll, I'll have um, the crib toy for my son who is now 34. Wow. And I still can't get rid of that crib toy, you know? So, you know, attaching to people, to things, to objects, feelings, to, to words on paper, and, mm -hmm. and feeling like I would be uh, disrespecting the original words if I changed them somehow, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Because that's how they came spilling up. So, yeah. <laughs> so, and that is really, um, that I think is a key point of honesty is to keep it as raw um, as possible in its original state and form. Um, last week, Miriam, we were talking, 
last week again. That wasn't last week. That was Friday. We had our Friday night program. Me and my me and my daughter were on, and um, that for you guys will be in the link in the description box below, or as a comment part in for Instagram because. For whatever reason, I was not able to upload it onto Instagram. So Miriam, we're going to try to keep this within the, the spectrum of 15 minutes or 20 minutes if that works for you. Um, and if it's not if it, if it's not available on Instagram, then I will send it to you in a link as a YouTube connection. Because for whatever reason, you, Instagram is not always allowing me to share my live if it goes over a certain length. So that's just a little bit of housekeeping, guys, for, for those of you who are listening from YouTube. Um... But last week we were talking about honesty, right? And um, and my my daughter and I, if you haven't seen the video, we're having a discussion specifically as it links to a woman's um, a woman's appearance. So not in our I wouldn't consider us in that age of sexual marketplace value. So women who are of marrying age who want to have children and a family. Right. Um, and so finding a partner being an issue because women today seem to have unrealistic ish, uh, expectations when it comes to finding a partner for marriage or finding a partner for marriage and family, because not everybody wants that. Right. Um, and so how do you would how would you uh, rate yourself from a scale of one to ten, ten being the highest? And having this discussion with women about weight, right? For for um, for those of us who have struggled with um, maintaining a healthy weight, um, why is it so difficult? And how do we contribute to um, just as just as a, a minor example as to how women contribute to the destruction of other women by not being able to be honest with some of these things that are important for the outcomes that they want. But that's just one example, you know, marriage and children. There are other examples of how dishonest we are and why dishonesty is so damaging and dangerous for the sisterhood circle because it doesn't allow us to grow into what it is we really need to to accomplish the things that we, we say we want or to accomplish them in, in the reality of where we are at. And so the question to you is, um, do you agree or disagree with that being the rhetoric of today? And what have you, what, what is your stance? Like, how do you, how do you feel about this comment? Okay, so um, I guess I am, um, from that perspective, uh, talking about honesty, I guess I am a bit disconnected from from it, um, simply because I, 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 really, I really, really live in my own bubble. Um, okay. And, uh, but I'm, I am aware, I am aware of it. So um, I think that, um, uh, you know, if I were to use myself as, as an example with anything that has to do with appearance, um, you know, of course, I'm, I'm 54 years old, so uh, so I have a, I have that perspective. <laughs> so I, I am very, very aware of the fact that uh, a younger me um, was more acutely aware of, of certain uh, of certain things that had to do with physical appearance that I wasn't okay. particularly happy. Okay. So, uh, uh, also, I, 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 uh, I know that I'm more comfortable on the other side of the camera than on the front side of the camera. Really? Um, and you, you so, were in a movie? <laughs> we did that movie together, and really? Yes. Yeah, so the only way that that happens is if I, if I don't think about myself. You know, it's, it's, a, I'm a character, so. So that that comes easy, or that came easy. That 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 part comes easy by acting, mm -hmm. you know. But um, so uh, yeah. So like uh, for example, I, I w there was a, just this uh, very recently a little get together with high school friends, you know, all my age, and I'd rather take pictures of them than I like. I tell them, girl, don't know how to teach me how to pose because I don't even know mm -hmm. what to do. You know, I'm like, well, my hands seem to be dangling somewhere. I don't know what to do with them, you know. Um, do oh, you, no, that's, that's like. 
Um, That's like a bad angle. I don't like that angle. So I guess I am vain, you know, but um, in, in a way, you know, but at the same time, I also don't care. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but back to your point, um, uh, I feel that, you know, after, I'm, like I said, I'm 54 now and, you know, when you have that realization, when you're able to connect with, with the inside of you and how you feel, then you become, then you realize that it doesn't really matter, um, which, which little flab is here or there. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter that I have this age spot right here. You so know, do you have children? You, you have children, right? You, you mentioned that you have a son, yes. you have two sons and a yes. daughter. Right. I have three children and I have three grandchildren now. Wow. Oh my gosh. That is so amazing. Yeah. Aww. Oh yeah. Um, Eduardo just had a baby too, right? I'm not sure. He did. No, Eduardo and Yvette are still uh, just focused on, uh, right now they're mostly focused on uh, Yvette, Yvette finishing up her nursing uh, degree. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so, so my three grandchildren are by my oldest son. Okay. And so, um, well, I know for, for men it's slightly different. I mean, women are more interested in how a man can provide and stuff like that in this, in this age range. But for your daughter, is that a conversation that ever comes up with you and her about how she looks and how she feels about how she looks? And what is it that you say to her there? That never comes uh, up? Do you think that it's an issue? Uh, yeah, I mean, very, um, I would say not as an important topic. Um, there have been times, uh, like she, I remember one thing she said, you know, that her friend told her, her best friend, she says, you know, uh, my friend told me, I guess this was one time it came up and she said, my friend told me that a good thing to do is go in front of the mirror every morning and say, you are awesome. You're beautiful. I love you. You know? And, mm -hmm. and she says, you know what? So that's, I'm doing that. You know, that's, that's probably one of the few times it's come up right now. She's, she's, well, she's, she's tattooing herself so and then this last week she put one on her arm and i was like no why didn't you put one on your arm i didn't tell her this mm -hmm. but i was like I, I i'd hope you would never put one on your arm you know um but but it's her thing it's her body you know it's what makes her it's how she's expressing herself um uh but as a as a determinant factor in 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 your in your in, in your aspirations um I would say kind of no, uh, it, that, that doesn't come up, you know, um, have you ever, okay. So let, let me ask the question like this then I'm not trying to like, well, honestly speaking, have you ever had a conversation with her to say like, this is important or this isn't important when it comes to how you look like my daughter knows that I'm very honest. And sometimes my honesty can be a little bit, um, an, of an annoyance to her, a bit of an annoyance. It's a major annoyance. So I'll say things like, I'll tell her friends directly, like, you know, hey, it's not healthy for you to be this size. You know, you're young, you should have more energy. And, you know, I know that maybe finding clothes might be a bit of an issue because this is, you know, and teenagers, you're, you're, you have your little clicks and stuff like that. And I tell her, if she would say, I hate my hair, that has been an issue for us, right? Like hair has been an, an issue. She has this big, massive amount of hair. She didn't have, she doesn't have hair like the baby. And she always says, I will, I'll just cut her hair off and put it on my head. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> I used, and she will say to me, I hated my hair when I was this age, you know, people call me this or that. And so it was a sore point that I had to say, all right, I'm going to have to have a conversation with her about loving her hair you know this is something that you're not going to be able to change so you might as well make it work for you and um and wait right she's very slim very um big busted i would say she got like the barbie figure the coca-cola small waist big breast big butt and she looks impossible you know and that makes her very uncomfortable because guys are always looking at her and i would think 
wow, if I look like that, I'd be half naked all the time, you know, <laughs> I would just be like, hey, but she's very insecure because of all the attention that she gets. And so I've had to be intentional about that. So my question is, do you have, have you noticed things where not maybe a red flag or an orange flag or a yellow flag that says, okay, this is something that I may want to have a conversation with her about because um, her being able to move in certain circles that may be important to her later on might be something that this is going to present a problem later. So how do I have a conversation or have I, am I going to have a conversation with her to say, this is something that you need to be aware of? You know, because I know you say it's her body, her choice. You don't want to impose your opinions, but um, do you feel like it's your place or something that you would want to be intentional about doing or have you done that? Yeah, so with my three kids, um, I believe the only time that uh, came up was actually with, with, the, with one of the boys. Okay. You know, um, so actually with, with, with the three of them were, uh, had, a, had a chubby face, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Hair. Um, she would be in her in her swimsuit and she'd be with her, with her belly pushed out and I, I thought it was, I would I thought it was funny you know and then uh, <laughs> and that, things took a natural course like she decided I'm not doing me uh, that was in her when she was like uh, uh, probably like 15 years old and I supported her with that and helped her along I got a manual and everything um, but it's been mostly about uh, going with the flow with her so when she wanted to paint her hair green you know. I've, I've supported her in her things that, that, that had to do with self-expression. But okay. um, but if we're talking about girls, um, there's been, I know, um, like, there's one uh, daughter-in-law I have, you know, who has, like, like what you say, that, that, that beautiful shape. And I'm, I'm always trying to encourage her, man, wear more tight-fitting clothes, you know? <laughs> and she doesn't like tight-fitting clothes. She likes loose-fitting clothes. I'm like, man, if I had that shape, no? How would I plant that, you know? But, um, yeah, sorry for your uh, non-Creole speaking no, uh, followers. <laughs> I'll just subtitle um, it. So, uh, but but with, with my two sons now, uh, the first one, um, one of the sons, he had a gastritis issue at one point, and oh, then okay. we had to make some different diet. So he naturally slimmed down, and he liked it. You know, so um, so it was a matter of, of something that, that made it happen. And then he, I'm sure he felt good after that. Now, the other son um, is the one that, that, that we, I probably made the most mistakes with when it comes to giving my opinion about weight. You know, because like I always say okay. to my kids, you know, guys, you didn't, you didn't come with a manual. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I'm going to say a lot of wrong things. You know, mm-hmm. um, but uh, remember that uh, it was it was a cause for concern. You know, um, because there was a little health issue. Uh, there was okay. some blood yeah. work done, and yeah. we knew that we had to do something, and we had to be serious about it. And mm-hmm. I remember his dad saying, "Because I would be like, oh, you can't deny the child what he wants. You know, he wants to eat. He wants to eat more. You know." And then um, their dad saying, um, "You know what?" It's best if he cries today than if we cry tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So, you know, me, me okay. to him now and let him be sad today. But we're not going to be crying because we lost our son five years from now, you right, know? Right. I mean, if things really understand. So it's been mostly for the health, um, the health, the health aspect, you know? Yeah, I'm so... But, I mean, looking at, looking at Cynthia, though, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I see, I could see why Cynthia would be... Um, Sorry if you're not using names. Um, it's fine. Uh, okay. Um, it would be would be self conscious because, uh, because I see her playing basketball. You know, it's like I'm a great basketball player. What the <laughs> hell does it matter what I look like? You know, this is this is oh, what I do. Well, look at me for this. I'm know? so I'm so glad that you brought that up because those are two issues. So body image and body positivity movement, right? So that. In terms of the bubble, that's what that is about. Is this body positivity, body positivity movement that has um, told people to embrace your 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 fatness, to embrace your big boneness, and to just accept your body as it is. And so, what we talked about in the last um, show, for those of you who weren't there on Instagram, was that um, she has had difficulty telling her friends who have weight issues 
exactly that. Like, hey, this is an issue. This is going to be a health issue and this is not healthy. And some friends will, will say, yeah, I'm trying and you know, I'm doing something about it. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. And other people are just like defensive and just say, I don't care. Um, and, and in this age, especially 15, 16, 17, where they're figuring out who they are, you know, you've been there. Um, this is, uh, yeah, she plays basketball, but she's also a, a girl that likes boys and how she looks is really important to her. So she wants to be comfortable when she's playing, but she also wants to be girly enough to be attractive to the boys, but not too much, but not too little, you know, everything is just like mixed up. And so those two issues, body positivity and body image, like how do I see myself? And so what I ended the show with last time, I don't know if you're familiar with probably Johari Window, right? The four aspects of the human personality, who we are, who we think we are, who people think we are, and the unknown. And when it comes to honesty and being able to have these conversations as parents and as sisters, you know, friends, how honest can, do you think people can be in saying some of the things that need to be said so we can get to that unknown that can help us um, help us be our, our, the best version of who we are? Yeah, so with that, I believe that um, we, need, we would need to wait for a cue that, uh, that somebody else okay. might want our, our point of view or something that uh so we have i think we have to be attentive because the time will come when because nobody who has a, a, like a weight issue on either side you know um putting on the pounds or or, or or thinking they need to have less of the pounds um i don't think that that anybody would not be aware of it so i think that uh if first and foremost that person is your friend and you do all the other things that, that friends do together. You know, you hang out, you uh, go for a walk in the park, you, whatever it is that you're doing, you go and, and, and scarf down a burger, whatever it is that you, you do, that you do together. You just do it together, and that's your friend first and foremost. But then I think if we, if, because we just, we just stay attentive and wait for that first cue, because there will come a time when the person who we both know, even if it's never talked about, has uh, will we'll say, you know what, man, I wish I could uh, lose at least only five pounds. You know, then then you're ready. You're like, just drink two liters of water every day. You're gonna see what magic that's gonna work. Right. You know, just mm -hmm. go. My uh, now I'm like, man, my punch is already getting out of hand again. You know, and and I when I'm having difficulty bending over, you know, for my for my shoes or whatever. Like okay, it's time to, 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 to look a little bit to look a little bit more closely what I'm putting in my mouth, what my habits are. You know, uh, maybe um, that I know that little walk I do with the dogs every day. I know that's not enough. I'm not doing it, not even three thousand steps for the day. You know, so I know I need to do something, and I reach out to my daughter-in-law, who's the one who's practicing nursing, or to my other daughter-in-law or my daughter. Uh, I have the three girls in my life, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they will. Uh, always uh, have something to contribute like i have one daughter-in-law right now who's fermenting uh kombucha you know and i know what that does to me it's it's uh, she's learning to do it uh, it's so great for the gut you know um i i love having an appetite i don't like to eat just because i know i need to eat i love i love feeling hungry i love when i feel like um okay i got to the point where i'm actually hungry you know, I feel like it's such a great accomplishment. You know, it means I've been moving. It means that my gut is moving. Mm -hmm. And um, my other daughter, the other one who's doing nursing, she'll say, um, well, her and my daughter, too, they're always about the water. And um, she was just telling me, okay, you need to go on a calorific deficit, you know, for a bit. Right. You know, so, so I, I take the carbs out. And so I'm, that's what I'm doing right now, you know. Um uh, just paying attention to your body, you know, and I think if any, if at any time we have the opportunity to share what it is we do for ourselves to keep, to keep, um, to keep ourselves feeling, yeah, feeling great. Firstly, feeling great. The looking great happens, you know. And, do you and, feel um, like? And, and, <clears throat> yeah, I was going to ask you. Sorry to cut you off, but do you feel like? people can be honest with you in your life 
about things that they may not necessarily like or are of concern to them about you? Do you feel like you have that sense um, of openness? Yeah, but um, I generally feel that there were more important things to to discuss or look at. You know, like for example, if I if I'm walking up and somebody said like, "Girl, you gained weight," I'm it's like, uh, "Okay, I know." It, it, I, so it I depends. Know. It, it depends <laughs> on what it is that it is that that they need to say to you, like. What do you think would be something yeah. that you, what do you think would be something that you know is difficult for people to tell you that you know about yourself that you and the people around you are not willing to admit? Like, I am, I'm too opinionated. Like, I don't know when to stop. That's me. <laughs> like, That's I have to stop easier. in the beginning. Maybe, maybe like, like, uh, maybe like zip it a little bit. You know, like, you like, or a lot. A little bit. <laughs> You don't need to say that, you know. <laughs> that that's 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 it for me. Um, yeah, like I I think you know the people who love me would probably want to tell me that more often. You know, like you could zip it, you could you could zip it some more. You know. <laughs> you know what? The thing is that I, I you know some people just some. Other people love it, you know. It's yeah. Like, Talk some more. <laughs> I love oh, listening. Yeah. All right, Miriam. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. It's been really, really, really fun. I'm gonna have to sign this video off. You can check it out for yourself. I'm gonna send you the link. Um, but if I go over any, oh, if I go over 32 minutes, I am afraid I'll have problems. But for you guys here joining us on Instagram, you can see this video up on YouTube in full effect and my comments starting right now. Miriam, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the great weather over there and I'll see you again next time. Bye. It was a pleasure. I love you so much. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you too. Take Same care. Here. Bye. Bye. So you guys that was that um miriam is a great guy miriam is a great girl um she's a great woman i'm sorry um yeah i have to um so uh, yeah so she's she's a really good guy she's a really good person we've worked a lot together like i told you guys before we did one out one out art show and a movie i think i can link the the trailer um somewhere below so y'all could check that out it's called curse of the ishabai la Llorona, and there was a conjuring oh gosh my daughter is doing all kinds of madness here there was a conjuring movie that was based on that movie that we did that movie. i guess that hey i'm still online i'm still working here okay all right so um <clears throat> you know, being honest is thank you. Being honest is really hard work, guys. And um, Miriam seems to be a, a hands-off type of, or a minimal hands, not not too hands-on with her parenting. Um, I believe that I am definitely more hands-on, and that can also be that has also been extremely problematic. But I think also with me and my parenting style, it varies depending on the child that I'm dealing with. So um, my teenager, I am more hands-on because I feel like there is a sense of guilt and responsibility in terms of what it is that I expect she should be able to do at her age. Um, and giving her the best possible uh, situations, knowing that... I could have done better in the past and it's like something that I have to deal with because I there's nothing you can do about what you didn't do but what you can do is do better but for me doing better means doing more and that's also not good with the younger one I feel like I have more time and because it's two of us right and for those of you who don't know I had started raising my eldest daughter um, on my own um, as a single mom and my husband came into the picture when she was 10. So um, my, my other daughter seems to need a lot less attention sometimes because she has 
two parents and a sister. And so she's way less needy in that sense. And I'm way more confident that she'll be fine because I have more help. So I'm less hands-on with her. Um, a little bit about Marion's background. You know, she said that she has three children. She has grandchildren. She's done a phenomenal job. Her kids are amazing and, and they're, I'm sure they will be fine. And so it just goes to show, I've met all three of them. And I think it goes to show that hands-on can work. You know, they're sweet, well-mannered, very mild people. Um, I can't say the same for my youngest, but in terms of, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> in terms of honesty and what needs to be said in conversation, when you're having a conversation with a child as a parent, how much is too much and how much is not enough is definitely depending on the style, the, per, the the two people involved, the parent and the child, and what it is that it's related to. So if your child is in a situation where they kind of are, there is a risk, a high level of risk, like a health risk, or uh, some they're at danger to themselves, I feel like that's something that definitely needs to be taken very seriously regardless of how their feelings are. Like you heard what she said, the the father came in and stepped in and said, you know what, I don't care if he's going to be upset about not being able to stuff his face forever. This has to be done. You know, that takes a certain level of fortitude, honesty with the kid and with the cells and hurt feelings because I'm sure he wasn't happy about that. I'm sure the kid wasn't happy about not being able to do what he wants. But the reality, the, the truth was that it was going to be a major, major um, health issue. And so that's your cue sometimes. Sometimes you can't wait for a cue. Sometimes it's going to be like, well, you know, um, this is what's going to happen today. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. And sorry, not sorry. Um, <clears throat> because... For me, I personally feel like being a being a being a parent means that you are endowed with a certain level of responsibility to make decisions on behalf of someone who's not capable emotionally to make those decisions for themselves. I didn't get the age of the the daughter, um, but I'm assuming she is an adult, right? And um, of course, Miriam doesn't want to give her opinions and oppose, superimpose her opinions on her children if she wants them to make their life decision on their own. Um, I've not been there. Well, actually I have. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have been there and I wish I had said it. Maybe we can have it to be continued. But I've actually been in a situation where my child has told me, well, why didn't you as the parent stop me from my own madness? What? You wanted to do it. I thought I was being a good and supportive mother by allowing you to do what you want. And now you're going to be like, why you didn't stop me? You know, <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a child. You're the parent. You're supposed to. And I've, I've actually done that with. I've actually done that with my mother as well. And that was just some stupid ass shit. Like, I cannot believe I blame my parent because they were trying to be supportive and let me do what I want. But sometimes you should just not let them do what they want because they're not parents. They don't know anything. They don't know. She said it right. They don't come with a manual. But you as the adult are supposed to have more insight into life to know what to do when they are doing st stupidness. Stupidness. Right. You have to be the one to be able to say, all right, I have to I have to step in because that's what a parent does. And a parent is supposed to help the child navigate within their community and with with pairs and um, be able to carry on a life in society that is productive and satisfactory for that child. And sometimes decisions that they make now are not. um they're going to regret them and they're going to need and wish that somebody had stopped them to from doing things that might have negative repercussions. Um, 
I have a few tattoos. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, the outside of German men who like German women. So there's not a German man for every woman with tattoos, but, um, tattoos are like a, a definite turnoff if you're looking for a type of man. All right. And you may think that you're this or that, or you're this type of person now, but I'm not a tattoo person. I'm actually, I still am a tattoo person, but I'm married to a German. I'm not a very good example. Um, and so, you know, if my mom had maybe said something like, look, no, that's not a conversation for a mother to have with her, with her girl child. That's a conversation for the father to have with the girl child. And I'm not saying that there isn't a level of accountability when a person becomes a young adult. But as a parent, I do recognize that sometimes being hands-off has not worked out for me. <laughs> and I'm sure Miriam can agree with this as well. It's not always the best option. And I'm glad that she has gotten help with her um with, with the father of the children, because, um, that can make a huge difference. So thank you guys for joining me. I hope this has been helpful, interesting conversation, and I hope that you like, and subscribe. If you like the content, please like, and subscribe and leave your comments down below. I'm going to be on again later on. I got other stuff to do. So, you know, that's what's up. That's what's up.